Hey, welcome back to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today, we're in beautiful Covington, Kentucky, talking with Don Heinrich Tolzman, who is the historian of the Roebling Suspension Bridge Committee. Thanks so much for talking with us today. Glad to be here. So tell me about this beautiful bridge that we're standing in front of. This bridge was dedicated in uh, January 1867. This year celebrates its 150th anniversary and it's really a wonderful bridge. It was the model for the Brooklyn Bridge. It's the oldest bridge on the Ohio River. It was created by John Roebling. He was a German immigrant. He came to America in 1831, moved to uh, Saxonburg, a town he helped found near Pittsburgh, and he got into the bridge building business. He came here in 1856, started working on the bridge, uh, they had to break off and stop for a little bit because of a financial panic. They started again then in 1863, and then it was finally dedicated in 1867. And again, it's uh, really a wonderful uh, bridge and a, really a masterpiece of uh, engineering and construction. It's also on the National Historic Register of Historic Places. Now, this is definitely a landmark for both Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky. Where did the idea from the bridge come from? Well, the idea really goes back to the early 19th century. A lot of people on both sides of the river, especially in, in Northern Kentucky, felt the need to have a bridge because for business and commerce to bring people back and forth and goods back and forth. So it really, the, the idea came out really in the early 1810s and 20s. And finally in the 1840s, it was in 1846, a group of citizens in Kentucky petitioned to create the Covington-Cincinnati Bridge Committee. And this was then chartered by the state of Kentucky and then in 1849 chartered by the state of Ohio and uh, Roebling was brought here to draw plans for it. It took a little while because of the lack of funds uh, to really start work on it until, uh, it took till 1856 to start the work. And actually in the very beginning, there were people even opposed to it. People were afraid uh, on, say on the Cincinnati that business would fall over to the Kentucky side People were concerned about the, uh, the currents in the river would be affected by towers. Some were concerned that the smoke stacks from the steamboats were too tall. So there was some opposition early on, but finally uh, the people for it won out and work began in 1856. And how long did it take for them to finish it? Well, they worked on it in 1856 and 1857. They had to stop because of a financial panic. Then they started up again in 1863, worked on through uh, till 1866, and actually pedestrians could go across it uh, on the 1st of December, 1866. Uh, for two days, about 166,000 people walked across this bridge. And at that time, on both sides of the river, there were only 180,000 people and that means just about everybody on both sides of the river walked across the bridge on those two days. However, it wasn't actually then fully dedicated officially till New Year's Day in 1867. And is this the first of the bridges that we see here? Uh, it is the oldest bridge. There were uh, Another bridge was built earlier in the 1850s further upstream. But th at this point, it was the first bridge built at this point. And uh, it is the oldest bridge on the Ohio River. And uh, there are many other bridges that have been built since World War II, some as recently as the 1960s, that they say are in bad condition and have to be torn down. And, and this bridge, now looking forward to its 150th anniversary, is it really in very good condition. Are there going to be any celebrations going on for this 150th anniversary? Well, there will be a lot of festivities, especially uh, at Roebling Fest, which takes place in Covington in June every year. So uh, the, in uh, June 2017, we'll be celebrating Roebling Fest, but I'm sure there will be other events, uh, you know, on programs and lectures and so on. Uh, to take notice of the anniversary because it really is uh, an important uh, 
event really in, in, the, in the history of, of the area. So Don, tell me about the construction of this bridge. You mentioned that it's been here now for almost 150 years. It's still standing. There are other bridges that have been built since then that are no longer standing or they are in poor condition. What makes this bridge's construction so unique? Well, what's, it's really u unique because uh, Roebling built it with uh, suspension cables that are suspended over two towers and then they're affixed to uh, uh, an and anchored on the shoreline. And so each of the cables uh, that he built had 5,180 wires in them and then had uh, wire wrapped around them and they're uh, held by vertical suspenders and diagonal stays that hold them in place and it's a very uh, strong bridge and, and, and also the way it was built uh, it, it's not only just a utilitarian structure when you compare it to other bridges it's really a work an architectural uh, masterpiece a work of art really because Roebling not only studied engineering he studied architecture and if you look at the bridge you'll see the towers have a round arch so he built that in Romanesque architectural style and on top of the towers he has Greek crosses which have no function other than an artistic or aesthetic uh, motif to the bridge so he, he really had a, a feeling that you, he wanted to educate the public uh, in, in, in with, with regard to art and architecture. So it's really a work of art and architecture also. Now tell me about the decking that's on the bridge. <clears throat> well, the bridge was uh, dedicated in 1867. And at that time, of course, you had pedestrian traffic and uh, horse-drawn carriages going across the bridge. But by the 1890s, you had electric cars going, uh, wanting to go across the bridge, which are much heavier in weight. And the, the bridge really wasn't strong enough to, uh, to carry that kind of traffic. So at that time, uh, additional cables were added to the bridge and also truss work was added to the bridge. And, and there, the trusses, are painted blue so you can uh, really recognize those right away but they weren't originally there but they had to be added and that's why the bridge is so strong it, it was rebuilt uh, in the mid 1890s now tell me about the road that we're on there's a lot of things along this row or in this area that were named after Roebling well th that's right there's so many uh, things to come down here and see N of course you want to come down and see the bridge and see the statue of Roebling here on the on the riverfront but there's so many places around here uh, there's the Roebling Point bookstore which was once the office of the bridge company and where Roebling actually had his office and I like to go in there and look at all the interesting books on local history but also try to imagine you know where was it that Roebling sat and I, I have one or two rooms that I think where he actually had his office uh, then there's the ascent at Roebling a, uh, a, a, a wonderful uh, skyscraper uh, apartment and co condominiums over here which is designed to um, remind us of the angle of the cables on the bridge. And then there's a Roebling Row. There are some apartments over here. There are also buildings too, which are now marked by banners where Roebling stayed when he worked on the bridge. So there's a lot of historic places and homes over here, bookstore and things like that. And what's so interesting is that when uh, New Yorkers come here, uh, they're just amazed that we do so much for Roebling, that we have a Roebling Fest, we, we call the bridge, the, you know, it's named after Roebling, whereas the Brooklyn Bridge doesn't have the name of Roebling attached to it, and it doesn't have all these sites and places and businesses. Oh, and by the way, there's even a beer now called Roebling, uh, I think it's Roebling Ale. So <laughs> maybe you could even have a, a brew when you're enjoying the sights over here. So Don, you have a wealth of knowledge about Roebling and the bridge, 
But you've also written a couple of books about Roebling. Can you tell us about your books? Well, yes. I, I felt that a lot of people know the bridge and they drive by it and see the bridge. But it was about 10 years ago I brought out a book called John Roebling and His Suspension Bridge because my feeling was, well, they know the bridge, they see the bridge, but they don't know nothing enough about John Roebling and who he is and what he is and what he was all about and he was such a fascinating person. Uh, people don't realize the man was a genius, uh, not only in engineering, but he was just like a renaissance man. He, he, he could play a variety of musical instruments, he wrote about philosophy, theology, he was just a brilliant person and he only lived to be 63 years old and when you think about all he accomplished within that lifetime. He built all together, uh, was responsible for designing 10 bridges, and uh, this is one of the three that still remain standing today. The others are not there, which makes our bridge important. So I brought that book out to, to just, you know, inform people what, you know, what this man was like. He was so interesting. And then I brought out another book, which was about the construction of the bridge. My first book, was more biographical, telling about Roebling and his personality and what he was like. And the second book, the John Roebling Suspension Bridge, it goes into the technical and mechanical aspects of how did they build the towers, how did they build the, the, the bed of the bridge, the cables, and all that technical detail. So I, you have two books, one's biographical and one's more technical and mechanical, but they both give you an idea of of what the whole package is about. Wow, that is a lot of information. <laughs> such, such cool information. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk with us about the bridge. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks again so much for tuning in to today's edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today we spent time in Covington, Kentucky, talking with Don Heinrich Tolzman. We learned all about the Roebling Suspension Bridge. I certainly hope that you enjoy learning all about it. Remember, travel, travel slowly, slowly and, and stop, stop often. often. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.